Hey, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to another debunking video. This week we're taking a break from COVID and looking at what someone called the Patriot Nurse has to say about polio. This should be interesting, I guess, maybe? I don't know. Let's find out. So just to give you some context here before we dive in, polio has been in the news a couple times recently. First, a few months ago when an unvaccinated child in Israel came down with a case of paralytic polio. And it was just recently in the news again after polio was found in the London wastewater. Polio virus is shed in the feces of infected individuals, so it can be found in sewage wastewater. And some countries track their sewage wastewater for polio to see if there's any floating around in the community. It's this most recent story about wastewater that prompted the Patriot nurse to talk about it in one of her recent videos and say a lot of stupid things. So let's get to it. Let's see what she has to say, and then I'll talk about it. But some of the things that you've heard about polio, for instance, that if everyone has polio, we can expect that there will be massive rates of paralysis and of flaccid limbs. The bottom line is the data do not substantiate this. Oh boy, I know what's coming here. A classic anti-vaccine talking point minimizing the impact that a disease has on society. Here it comes. So according to the NHS of the UK and also the CDC, the consensus is that well over 90% of people will be relatively asymptomatic who experience polio. Yep, there it is. So although it's true that about 1% of people who actually get infected with polio will develop paralytic cases and even fewer will actually die from it, this small percentage becomes a very large number when there are lots of cases in the community. And polio can spread very easily, especially throughout an unvaccinated community. I'll give some more numbers on this topic, but this is a real sticking point in the Patriot Nurses video here. She is minimizing the impact that polio has on a community. And that is disgusting. There have been, um, in recent days, there have been increased instances of the water treatment facilities finding that polio, the virus that causes polio, is making its way through the wastewater treatment plants. And why is this? Because polio is a fecal oral disease. Yeah, that's true. But disappointingly, she doesn't go into any detail at all about why polio is sometimes found in wastewater. So let me explain. With polio, there are two versions of vaccine that are widely used. One is the injected polio vaccine, or IPV for short, and the other is the oral polio vaccine, or OPV for short. These are two vaccines with two different effects. The injected polio vaccine is a killed vaccine that obviously gets injected into your muscle. It's going to give you immunity against severe disease from polio. It's going to stop the virus from invading your central nervous system and causing paralysis. However, it will not confer immunity to your mucosal surfaces. So your intestines, your saliva, those kinds of things will not gain a substantial immunity to polio. So you can still become infected, you can shed it, but you're not going to get disease. Meanwhile, the oral polio vaccine is of course administered orally through a few drops and it is going to confer immunity to your mucosal surfaces. It's going to prevent you from getting infected and also prevent you from suffering severe disease from polio. And that's the whole point, right? But oral polio vaccine is a live vaccine. So in very rare cases, about one in 2.4 million people can actually come down with a case of paralytic polio from the oral polio vaccine. This is why in developed countries like the US and the UK, they have phased out the use of oral polio vaccine and we use injected polio vaccine, which does not have that risk. However, many developing countries still use oral polio vaccine because it's much easier to store, it has a longer shelf life, and it doesn't require any expertise when people have to inject it. It doesn't require sterile needles, trained personnel, things like that. This means that developing countries can have more doses of oral polio vaccine and administer them more easily to the general public, and the benefits of that oral polio vaccine far outweigh the risks, as I'm going to talk about more as the video goes on. I'm just giving you all this background because the Patriot nurse didn't bother to talk about any of that, and it's really important to understand these two vaccines when you talk about polio and what's happening now. The reason being that, because I said that oral polio vaccine is a live, weakened virus, that means that people who receive oral polio vaccine can sometimes shed it in their feces, and 
that can be detect detected in wastewater. And that's what happened with these London wastewater samples. However, what's different about these London wastewater samples is that the amount and length of time that they've detected this vaccine strain polio in the wastewater indicates that there's some community transmission, which may be concerning for unvaccinated individuals, but given the high degree of vaccine immunity in the population of the UK, most scientists are saying that this is probably not going to be an issue. Again, as long as you're vaccinated, you're not going to suffer paralysis or death from polio. But let's continue listening to Patriot Nurse minimizing a deadly disease, and then I'll explain why she is horribly wrong and extremely careless. The interesting thing is that it depends heavily upon when an individual experiences polio in their lifetime, whether or not they're going to develop the paralytic sequelae, meaning the after effects um, associated with paralysis for people who contract polio. If a child contracts polio, you're looking at one in a thousand as the chance that they're going to develop paralytic polio, which is where we see the limbs that stop to work, the shrunken limbs, etc. Okay, so like I said, a small fraction of those who get infected with polio will suffer paralysis and death. But those small percentages turn into very large numbers when you're dealing with a virus that spreads throughout a population. This is seen throughout the history of polio. For example, in the 1990s when polio was endemic in India and the trivalent oral polio vaccine was not yet rolled out, polio was causing an estimated 500 to 1,000 cases of paralysis in children per day. 500 to 1,000 cases of paralysis in children per day. That matters. That is something you want to prevent, right? That is not something you minimize by focusing on these misleading percentages. But the Patriot Nurse does it anyway. Here's another metric for you. Globally, it is estimated that 18 million cases of paralysis have been prevented by polio vaccination. 18 million sounds a lot more meaningful than 1% or less that the Patriot Nurse continues to focus on and mislead her audience on. Did you know that the place in the body where polio antibodies are specifically manufactured, did you know that that's the tonsils? How many people do you know had their tonsils hacked out by a bunch of doctors who were doing the best medicine of the day and taking out functional organs thinking that they knew better than God instead of telling people to eat diets that were better and less inflammatory, they decided they were going to go and cut on things that didn't need to be cut out. So again, the best medicine of the day has gotten a lot of people weaker and sicker. Yeah, no. Tonsils are immune organs that can produce antibodies. But they're not the only place in the body that antibodies against polio are made, and it's not the only place where memory cells against polio are kept. This is clearly and simply explained in the most basic literature on this topic. I don't know why she hasn't read this, and maybe it's because, I don't know, she's an anti-vaxxer. But there are plenty of immune organs in the body that produce immunity against polio and other viruses. Getting a tonsillectomy, getting your tonsils taken out, is usually because the tonsils are in a dysfunctional state that is harmful to the body. So it's a good idea to get that removed. And following that tonsillectomy, there's no evidence that a person's immune system is clinically impacted by the loss of the tonsils. Other immune organs can easily compensate. This also ignores the fact that many children in developing countries who suffer paralytic polio have never had their tonsils removed. I mean, I don't know what she thinks her audience is thinking, whether she thinks really lowly of them, but this is all really easy to check. I've mentioned this and I've beat this into pieces primarily because this is something that governments historically have used to steal people's rights away and to terrify people into giving more of their rights of, away. And that is not what we need in the midst of, of trying to rest the normalcy back from craziness at the, at the hands of governments who have trodden upon our rights over the past three years with corona. Always got to go back to the classics with anti-vaccine talking points, am I right? Those dang vaccines just keep taking away my rights to die young. Yeesh. What is it about that 5% of people that causes the polio to cross into the central nervous system? We really don't have great data on this. The best, in my opinion, the best and most informative lump of data that we have comes from 1938 by Dr. McCormick. Dr. McCormick hypothesized that it was a B vitamin deficiency. Oh dear God, she's got a cure for polio and it's food. No, no, no. 
Yeah, so in the 40s and 50s, when polio epidemics were ravaging America, it was mostly in the wealthy, more well-off communities that polio was striking with paralytic cases. These children were not malnourished. While it's never bad advice to, say, eat a balanced diet and don't be malnourished, most children in developed countries are not malnourished. It's great to not be malnourished, but eating a balanced diet is not going to make you immune to infectious diseases. That's just not how it works. You would think that maybe being a nurse, she would give proper advice and tell her audience to get vaccinated against polio, as they should. But she just doesn't because she doesn't care. Oh, but wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. She definitely cares. She has a response to that. Of course she does. Um, a lot of times when I bring this information forward, people will conflate the hard facts in front of them with a lack of empathy on my part. And obviously, I'm a nurse and I care about people's experiences and I want to help people be healthy. And I recognize that people have family members who experience this, people have family members who died, people have family members who have shriveled and contractured limbs. I obviously have sympathy for this, but... Of course, there's a but to that. She moves on to this bizarre monologue about how there are records of polio from ancient Egypt. And because we've lived with the virus for so long, then that means that it's fine, I guess. It's something we should just live with. Patriot nurse, yeah, we've lived with polio for a long time. And it sucked. It's been causing paralytic cases and deaths for all of those centuries. It's not good. If we can prevent it, why not prevent it? And the way we prevent it is with vaccination. Simple as that. I fully anticipate that if, if governments can get people to be scared again and to be terrified of these diseases of old, then they can continue stealing their rights away and continuing to disempower people by feeding them panic. And it is just not justified. It is not justified. If you want to shield yourself, keep your tonsils in your adenoids, have a well-rounded diet, low in inflammatory foods and rich in very nutrient dense foods. No, just get vaccinated. There's no reason to be afraid of polio as long as you're vaccinated. This is not about fear. This is about monitoring the polio eradication campaign closely and knowing where it is and what effect it's having in those populations. A child a few months ago who came down with a paralytic case of polio in Israel was unvaccinated. And that is such a shame because it didn't need to happen that way. If they were vaccinated, then they'd probably be fine. Polio vaccination has effectively eliminated the problem of paralytic polio and deaths from polio in communities that have sufficiently vaccinated their population. Again, this means an estimated 18 million paralytic cases have been prevented thanks to vaccination. That's something that we should aim for, right? We don't want that to come back. So when people like Patriot Nurse minimize the impact that polio has on the society and disregard solutions like vaccination, it's like they want that situation to come back and cause many more deaths that are preventable. But Patriot Nurse doesn't care. She just wants to sell her own classes, her own nutrition courses, and have that be the cure-all for polio. It's really disgusting. It's grifting at its finest. Seriously, she spends the rest of the video advertising her classes. It's a real shame. Anyway, that's going to do it for this week's video. As always, all of the links to all of the science that I talk about are in the description below so that you can read them for free for yourself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe so that you can catch me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.